Um, Neither do we. <laughs> right, but I, I'm just saying, yes, yes, I, I understand. That's why North, North and, and Shir Shalom get along so well. It's not a, it's not a clear divide. Um, but, uh, you know, fun, fundamentally, that, that division has been set. And it's, I think if you ask among liberal Jews, you know, Jesus clearly is a historical figure. You know, I, I read this, this book, Salad. I was really taken by, you know, what Christianity, for the first time, what Christianity stood for, what Jesus stood for. So I can empathize. But I also know this is not the box that I'm in. <laughs> you know, it doesn't mean that I can't completely empathize and understand, uh, you know, where Christians are coming from, especially Christians in certain group. you know, certain groups it's, definitely harder where there's evangelizing mm. and uh, uh, where it's it's you know where it's feel like my I, I you know so when people come at me with this question or come at members of the Jewish community it feels it's a very awkward moment and I'm glad you put it on the table here you know just because you know these the, the lines have been drawn mm -hmm. uh, and it you know would if Jesus was alive today and was part of that community and, you know, the voice he brought to stand up to power and this powerful symbol of a cross that, that says that even though Romans are going to, you know, try to destroy everything about us and say that, you know, that you, you say you're the king of the Jews, well, this is what you're going to end up. Now we're going to take that as our symbol of our religion. I mean, that is extremely powerful to me that, you know, that here... Uh, you know, Jesus came from this direction, and uh, you know that this symbol, the cross, actually, you know, is very compelling to me. Uh, but I also know that you know this this is my world and this is our world. Doesn't mean that we can't have dialogue. Uh, but Jesus is the divider. It is the mechitza. It is the line in between. I, I, I guess um, I would tend to put that into in more sort of. Uh, uh, historical terms uh, in that the Jewish uh, the, the, the movement around Jesus was one expression of Judaism in a uh, society at that time the early first century where there were lots of different Jewish sects that were around um, and uh, I don't think it was probably observed as significant in its time as the Gospels have us believe. <laughs> because the Gospels are written for a reason. They're written in order to um, you know, help their own communities sort of um, understand you know, the significance of what they're doing. And who they are. They're, they're, they, those are internal documents. Those are not written to uh, convince people outside. Uh, they're written for the communities themselves. And you know, in that, you know, the tendency in those in the Gospels is to um, sort of establish the case so that those folks in the communities can feel confident in what they're you know, and, and where their, what their stance is. Um, it's probably, it's fairly clear that, you know, for instance, in the Gospel of Matthew, that there is some kind of dispute between the Jewish Christian community and the Jewish community. That there seems to be some kind of, and, and the writer of, of Matthew is very um, concerned with establishing Jesus within the tradition of prophecy, and so there are lots of references to prophecy, um, uh, and you know, essentially what's going on is you've got prophecy historicized, and so the um, the writers are taking uh, events around Jesus' life and placing them within the context of prophecy, um, yeah. as, and it's a it's a it's a method. It's a way of um, sort of, like I say, rooting their movement in the tradition. It's validating. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's explaining to outside groups where, where framework you're in. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, and, and it helps for the for the group itself, the community itself, to sort of feel, um, you know, uh, as if they are on the right path, you know. Um, uh, sorry. Sorry, go ahead, George. Uh, Alex, I, I don't mean this to sound offensive. That's okay. That we're, which, honestly, I want us to put everything <laughs> on the table. So. Which, which aspect of Jesus that the Christian community in general views as holy do you object to? So, um, it's not that I object to anything about Jesus and the, the Christian community celebrating Jesus. It's I don't want that to be foisted upon me. So, it's, it's, it's a disrespect of my identity when, when that comes there. Because, you know, generations of my family fought for, for, you know, for our values. It's not, interfaith dialogue is not a, about wanting each other to be the same. You know, I, we, Bill and I believe that this world is better because of the multiplicity of views, even if it pits, even if it leads to misunderstanding sometimes. You know, that in this day and age, in America, as soon as we took religion as the, you know, that this, this is a country that we're, we have citizens, where we, we can have dialogue with one another, it means that we can have difference of, of opinions, we can learn each other's stories. I'm captivated by some of the stories. I, I like learning the stories. I love the, the myth making. I love, you know, what, what went into it. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, that's why probably both of us are in this kind of line of work. <laughs> Uh, but as soon as that question comes, it's, you know, it's, it's like, well, can I be who I am? You know, oh, it, I want to say one thing is that mm -hmm. I, one interesting suggestion that's come out recently, by the way, so this idea of the Christians that are Judaized or these Christians that are really part, uh, still part of the Jewish community in a certain way, that the, there, a lot of thought was after Constantine, they kind of disappeared. Mm -hmm. But if you look, at, there, there's been some discussion in the Quran that the Muslim view is actually closest to this Judeo-Christian understanding. And it, it possibly, in terms of how they view prophets mm -hmm. and other things, uh, that they actually have, that, that actually Islam might represent the way this Jewish Christian uh, community that was so strong and that <clears throat> that died off and that became different, actually it went towards the Muslims. That's what they were influenced. Mm -hmm. And if you look at their their the uh, Quran, you see it. You see the way the <clears throat> behavior is is actually most similar to these earlier Christian models. Stuart, yeah. Um, so I I find this question. Do you or why don't you believe in Jesus? Very ill-defined. Believe in, in in what sense? That there was such a person? That there's a reference to the term Jesus? Sure, I believe that that there was such a person. Just like there were all sorts of other people. Um, so I don't disbelieve in him in that sense. Um, your question, I think, was more apt. That is, when you say. Why don't you believe in Jesus? What What is it that you mean? Mm. Uh, what aspect do you mean? So, um, one thing you said was um, he fulfilled prophecies, and mm -hmm. I think Bill started uh, addressing that. He fulfilled proce prophecies post hoc, right. after the fact, after um, really? and it was, he was largely born, how he was born. Mm -hmm. Well, so that's a different yeah. thing. So, but those are um, prophecies. It's well, like proof that's texting. that's a much longer discussion. Um, so another uh, another question is that he was the son of God. Mm, yes. I mean, yeah. he he Jews. Yeah. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. But, but not, see, we, we not, can't. So, well, we, but, when it comes to belief, David, you know, you mm -hmm. have your beliefs, but you have to understand mm -hmm. that we have different beliefs, and that is not what we believe in. Mm -hmm. Right. No, I know. I'm just saying. So, so we're coming from a different context. Now, you could do it in different ways, like you know, like the way Bill presented it. You know, within this historical reality, which a lot of the Presbyterian community, certainly locally, you know, fits that. You know, and, and that's how I view, frankly, our prophets. You know, it more academically. Mm 
-hmm. you know, that, that these, I don't say, well, Abraham had a prophecy. You know, I don't, uh, this, was, this is a mythical story that's really important uh, to me and that's been passed down for generations and generations. I don't look at it as veracity truth. It was an important story. It has truth in it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're, that mostly in our settings, we're not looking at the, for the literal truth. Or that this, I, frankly, I don't believe history as we know it today existed until recently. We didn't, people didn't tell a history. Yeah. They didn't write yeah. history. They told mm -hmm. mythical history, mm -hmm. which is incredibly important. But they weren't concerned exactly right. what the, you know, what Jesus was eating on one afternoon. They couldn't, we couldn't know that, uh, you know, outside of the Last Supper. But, you know, you know, fundamentally, history was told, in Roman times, it was starting to form in different, different ways, but still, it's not, you know, I don't look at chronicles or say, well, that's exactly what happened. This is one perspective, I mean, that's what I've been taught postmodern. Yeah. When, I, when I asked you the question, I was expecting your answer, <laughs> that there are two things about Jesus, one of which is that Christians, by and large, consider him divine. And the other, which is that he died for all of our sins. Mm -hmm. And and those those two things, I I would have expected you to say, <laughs> amongst <laughs> others. So I mean, might be a lot of the right? and, not, and certainly not, <laughs> not all Christians believe either of those two things. I don't believe either of those, mm -hmm. uh, personally. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us like a little bit about what you do believe, as opposed to what you don't believe? Mm -hmm. Jesus? Pardon? Can you yep. tell us a little bit about what you do believe as opposed to what you don't believe about Jesus? Uh, I, I basically, there, there, there are two things. One of which is he taught us a lifestyle, and that lifestyle, I, I guess.